Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website development.com. I am PD Orski, the Toronto website developer. And in this sixth video tutorial on Bootstrap CSS, I want to show you how we can use Bootstrap to create some nice forms. But before we do that, you know, some over at Toronto website developer.com. Here you can find my book as well as my video tutorial series. Um, each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the money, um, but do want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment uh, on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to my channel. All of those help to continue uh, to help me uh, promote these video tutorials and get some more views on YouTube and push them out to users in need. So with all that said, I'm going to close up my website here and we're going to head back over to localhost. I'm at uh, bootstrap and then I'm at contact-complete. Um, this is what our final first form iteration will look like. Then we're going to take a look at how we can add labels in line with our inputs. And lastly, we'll take a look at how we can create a one line horizontal inline form. So in order to do that, I'm going to open up my code editor and you'll notice I'm my contact.html here. And I've just copied index.html over to contact.html and removed the content that we had. So same head uh, tag with the metas, the link, the title, as well as my navigation. And you'll see here I've got an empty container. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste in some code. And I'm going to walk you through how we create our first form. So as I mentioned, I've got my div class container here and I've got form element and I've added the class form to it. That's the first thing that you're going to want to do. Second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wrap your labels and inputs in what's called a form dash group. Lastly, on each input element, you're going to want to put form dash control and those all combined will actually give you this type of form. You'll see my contact page here it now has the form that I have um, on my contact complete. If we wanted to say, rather than have our labels on top and the actual text elements uh, below, you'll see here phone and then the, the element below the input, we're going to have those in line. It's easy enough for us to do. First thing we need to do on the label is that a class equals call excess and then however wide you want this to be. So I'm going to add two. Next thing I do is just add a div class equals and then whatever the remainder is. So excess dash 10 and I'm defining the smallest screen size so that it applies all the way up. And then when, oh, last thing I have to do for this is rather than form, I want this to be form dash horizontal. When I save that and I reload this page, you'll see that I now get my label in line with my input. Uh, but this is super wide and super ugly. So what I want to do is actually here define my div class equals and let's do a call excess. Let's do six. So I'm just going to give it uh, six columns for the entire form. And now when I reload this, you'll see that it's uh, shrunken. And I also want to go ahead and add an offset. So call excess offset and what do we want it to be we want it to be three reload this page we're now in the in the front and if i scroll these in you'll see that it's still responsive still nice so that's good the reason why we chose an offset of three is because you're gonna have three on one side offset and then three on the end and then i've got six so all that combined makes 12 so that's why i went ahead and did that um so I guess you could watch me do it, but really you can take my word for it. You want to want ahead and copy this class XS2 to each of the different uh, labels and then wrap the inputs in the div class uh, call XS10. And that will put the label in line with all of them so that you just won't have name. You'll have all three looking the exact same. The last thing you're going to want to do when you do that though, is you're going to want to add a div class equals, and then you want to do a call uh, XS offset of two around these guys. And I want to save that. And then when I reload this page, you'll see that my buttons move over and they'll be in line with your input boxes. So that's why I went ahead and did that. So now we've covered how you can do a regular form, you can do a horizontal form. Let's take a look at how you can do an inline form. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy these guys and I'll put them inside the container. And let's just back this up. Okay, and we gotta close off our form. Okay, so 
I've got a name field here. I just want to create a second one. I want to get rid of this div. And I'm going to walk you through all of this. So don't worry. Okay, copy this guy. Let's get all these lined up. We're good there. Okay, so what we've done is we've gone back with the form. Um, this is not going to be form horizontal. We're going to do form in line. And I've got a form group from my name field. And so the input. And what you want to do is just remove this label. And then rather than your name, let's do this as username and password. And I just realized we have to actually remove this form because things will look a little messed up because it will try to put the two forms to side by side. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. So I've got form, I'm closing my div. We removed our labels, username, password, or form in line. Um, and I want to go ahead and add a div class equals check box. And then I'm going to do an input type equals check box. And remember me. And we're going to close our label. Oops. And then we want to add a button to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a button type equals submit. And class is going to be equal to btn, btn primary. And this is going to be sign in. And now when I go ahead and I reload this page, you'll see that I have my username, my password, my remember me, my button sign in. And what I want to do to make this really crisp, really clean, is I want to add div class equals well, well, small. And I want to close that div up. And now when I reload this page, you'll see that I get this nice um, wrapper bar that kind of makes it look like my content is sunk in, gives it a little bit of profile. And so that's how you create an inline form. Remember, we wiped out the labels. We have a placeholder for username and password, and then a checkbox for remember me. And just note, remember, when you add the checkbox, it's a div class of checkbox, not a form group. Um, and that's the third type of form that we create. And just before I let you go, I want to show you some helper classes that we can use. Um, so first is in the form group here, we can actually do input uh, LG and then here we need input small. And so when I reload these guys, you'll see that one is uh, input. And it didn't actually really change anything. I should use my other form to show you. Let's just go ahead and wipe this guy out. So on my input class here, I want to do, this is going to be input dash LG up on this guy. This is going to be input small. If I reload this page, you'll see that I get this bigger text, smaller text, and then normal text. So those are the three. And now if I wanted to actually disable my, my phone number here, what I could do is add disabled to this element. And if I reload the page, you'll see that it actually gets disabled by bootstrap. Uh, and the last thing that I want to show you is this cool span class with input group add-on. So let's undo those guys so that's cleaner and then here I want to do um, span class equals input group add-on and then we'll just put a hashtag there and let's close that span 
and then I'll actually add that to my email here and then I'll just add at Toronto website developer.com save that and if I reload this page did not work out and that's because preparing for this I did not pay attention to the fact that it's not a form that we have it is going to be an input group so here rather than a form group maybe input group I copy this guy copy that guy copy that guy and now if I reload this page there we go so still really ugly because you don't want your labels on there so you just want to go ahead and delete that delete that and then when you reload your page you'll see that I get my email and then you get this tagged on uh, at torontowebsitedeveloper.com and then here I had the span before the element and so it tacks it on before and you could obviously if you wanted to maybe it's not so obvious I could go here delete this guy and let's copy this I have the at Toronto website So I've got one before and I got one after. If I reload the page, you'll see that they show up before and after. So that's it for forms. Uh, we saw three different ones. First was our regular form. Then we looked at form horizontal. Then we looked at form input, showed you some cool kind of helpers where we can change the font size using input large and small. And then we can also use the span class input group add-on. But remember, you're not gonna have a form group. You're gonna have an input group. Uh, and we also saw how we could disable form elements. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully it helps you. If it does, leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much for watching.